Hello everyone and welcome to another Scrap Mechanic video. Like we did in the last one, we're going to go through the creative process together, as a lot of you responded to that very well, and we're going to design a forklift truck from scratch. Now I've already started doing a few things over here, but to let you know what happened to the spider car that we did in the last video, well I destroyed it. You see, the world that we are in has become horribly laggy, and I thought the spider car might be responsible for that. Turns out it wasn't. And I also took a lot of your feedback and tried to improve it and correct it. And I realized that the spider car had become pretty messed up over time. There were lots of little mistakes I'd made with all the bearings and connections. Anyway, I'd like to start this one off by showing you how laggy a world can get. Let's remove this lift. And look at that. The frames disappear. I think every single time this thing comes off the lift and goes back on it, it gets worse and worse. It's getting pretty unplayable. So this thing is going to sit on the lift until... We need to uh, make our own little forklift truck, at which point I might just remove this thing because it's becoming pretty unplayable at this point. And I was wondering if I could reduce the size of this a little, maybe take some of these seats off that aren't necessary and see if it would help. But I very much doubt that would make any difference at all. Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, this world is becoming pretty unplayable pretty quickly. Anyway, let's head over here because I've done a little bit of research. I was thinking about how a forklift, tr a forklift, <laughs> a forklift truck works, and basically we're going to have our forklifts at the front go up and down. And the mechanism for that is actually, you know, kind of quite simple and straightforward. There it is, lifting up. There it is, lifting down. Here's another design that can go a lot further. Bam! Up there it goes, and back down it comes. Now. I want to point out that that bit of the front there stays level. It just moves very fast. It might be um, a little bit tricky to see it. So we can make one that lifts very high, which I think would be quite interesting, or something a little bit steadier like this. One thing we do have to consider, though, is that we're having two of these side by side. So if ever we um, put the loop on here, this little option right here, then they will bang into each other like these two did. But I don't think we're going to end up using that. So let me explain. In fact, let me show you the bearings right here. If you want to figure this out for yourself, you know, there's all the bearings set up. And then here's the settings for this. So you can copy paste. Oh, yeah, the last two bearings didn't have any rotation on that design, which is something that I uh, overlooked because on this design right here, you do need rotation on the last one. So there's the bearings for this setup. And there is the setup in the rotation editor. Uh, now this one over here, this doesn't actually do anything, but I've kind of wired it up based on what I was thinking about. So we have like an on-off situation. You go up, you go down, and the thing with forklift trucks is that you would stop it midway. And I can't figure out a way to do that. My original idea was to perhaps have it so that we had two sets of bearings working in opposite directions and that you could let's say half rotate some of these and they would stop midway and then if you wanted to come down again you could use the ones that rotate in the opposite direction so if you picture this thing working like that one does over there it raises up and then you use the other set of bearings that are attached to it to go the opposite direction uh, then it should in theory come back down again but that has been not possible because of the nature in which the way these work basically even if you have the loop on if you have it like this um, it, you're going to go from one state to the other, and that's it. There's no sort of pausing in between. Now, I'm going to give myself some time to think about it, but I did really scratch my head on this one, and it may just be that it's not possible to get a forklift to operate in the way that we want it to. And if that's so, then uh, we'll just move on and start building this thing, because we've just got to build a vehicle with an engine and then put this on the front of it. Another thing I do want to mention is that I really wanted to uh, find something that could slip under the pallet over here because this is what you would use a forklift truck with most of the time. And if there was a block that could fit in between that gap, um, then we could actually use pallets and pick them up as well. Now that I say that, um, no, 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 I did check. I did check. This side over here would be the way to go through. You may think that going in this way would be better because of weight distribution, but you've got a bigger gap on this side over here. Um, so if I had a look at the different blocks and block sizes. Now that one is slightly shorter, but you'll see here that it's not slim enough to go through that gap. And I'm pretty sure I checked over everything that's available in the game at the moment. So that might not be possible. That being said, what about toilet paper? <laughs> what if that's on its side? Can it not go like this way around? That might be able to get pushed under. 
No, do you know what? I don't think it would. However, if these pallets were like rested on uh, grooves on the ground like this, then I think any block would technically be able to slide under there, lift up and pick it up. Yeah, I think we've got our first little idea right there. Okay, let's go and grab a pallet. That's awesome. I'm glad I decided to talk about that a bit more on camera. You know, I did my testing and then I thought, why don't I uh, show the peeps what I've been up to? <laughs> uh, let's rotate that around then. So it's going to be like that. And I guess what we want to do... Is that too far apart for that? I think it is. Let's just put it on the one to see if it picks it up. So you would have your grooves like this. So I must have jumped the gun a bit with this one because I've since noticed that they go out to the side. I don't know like how I overlooked that and if we change the rotation they're just going to nudge into each other. So if we swap this one around to 180 and that one around to minus 180 um, then we can at least give this thing a test but you'll see it'll just nudge into itself. Even though they sort of stay side by side which is I guess what we want to look at for at least a split second. Now when we build the proper thing, it'll all be correct. This is just a test. There we go. So that will drop down. That's good. Let's remove the base. And it kind of looks like it doesn't really pick it up. It doesn't go into those grooves, does it? Oh, that is unfortunate. I'm going to have to play around with that a bit more. Anyway, there's an idea. There's something that I'm going to test and see if we can get to work. Um, and as I said, I'll have a think about the design of the forklift as well. So I've decided to move over to a fresh new world because whenever we need to use the uh, the lift on this contraption we're going to build, it's going to get real laggy. So it makes sense to come to a new world. And I've had a change of heart actually about how I want this to work as well. If ever you've worked with forklift trucks, you'll know that not all of them um, go that high off the ground. And if we are to go high off the ground, the only solution I see is that we have um, big arms that pop out to the side to rotate it up to the top, which I thought would look a little bit odd. So messing around with a more compact design, I've come up with this, which, although it doesn't go far at the moment, when we build the forklift truck itself, uh, that'll probably go a few more blocks like up, and it'll probably be closer to the ground when it's down as well. Now what I wanted to do is a little test here. Um, we, if we extend that over here, and then remove that. The block above is going to be floating and it's very likely it's going to fall off to the side here but it didn't <laughs> and that was extremely cool. I like it. We have we have built like the first little bit of it right here. That's awesome. That looks great and another thing I really want to do is make this look good as well. Oh by the way if you slow down the animation it looks pretty cool as well when it's slow. So let's do that. Let's bring it down to like this speed and press the button and it might be a little bit more stable picking up the box. Oh no, that time it wasn't quite as good. Well, there you go. But the animation there looks fantastic. And like I said, we want to make this thing look cool as well. So we're not going to build it out of concrete blocks like I've done here. But anyway, that's the forklift truck design. So now we're going to start with the lift and start building the base of the vehicle and figure out how we want the wheels to work. Alright, so I don't think there's too much more to think about with the design of this. The main thing to figure out was the lift. The rest of it should be fairly easy. Now forklift trucks usually have rear wheel drive and bigger wheels and heavier wheels at the very front uh, close to where the weight will be put on this thing. So I've been looking for all the materials in the game and I quite like this right here. A lot of forklift trucks tend to have a frame um, at the front and that's going to be R1 and then here are the forklifts. We might move those in a little bit, I'm not sure. Uh, but behind them we'll have these beams and between the two is where we're going to attach the lift mechanism. So these will probably find themselves attached to this bit right here. And this is going to be the bulk of the vehicle, which I'm going to make in orange. These are the front wheels right here. They've got some bearings on. And what we're going to do, I think, is rear wheel steering and rear wheel drive as well. I think that's how forklift trucks work. The drive is at the back, but most of the time they do have rear wheel steering. And then the theme for like this bit back here is mostly going to be uh, metal, some of this stuff right here, what's it called? Uh, barrier blocks and then you know any of these orange blocks right here um, because they're probably going to suit the theme quite nice. So then we'll have like a split, we'll have orange for the bulk of the forklift truck and then the front is going to be with this more bluish shade of metal and I think it can work out pretty well. I was just wondering though, does that look a little bit odd with the wheels sort of poking out from either side? Maybe all of this should be over by one, that's something I might change uh, but either way, I'm actually pretty happy with how this is going so far.
So this looks just about right in my opinion and it would have been nice if there was a smaller block of this type we could have used here instead of the orange but there you go and I'm kind of picturing it being a bit more built up like maybe these beams go a little bit higher and then the driver sits maybe three or four blocks above the wheels um, so they can see out really well and then the whole of this thing will actually be quite big but anyway we've got a test to do because I've wired this thing up and I've looked at the way these are rotated and sort of thought yeah, kind of looks all right, and I've copied what we did on the opposite side. I can't actually open that. There we go. And we've got 90s going one way, then the other, and then back the other way again. And I've already given this a while. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, but it's good to see that it does something, because it stays together, which is really important. I was wondering, if we look at this, there's a few inconsistencies in motion. It drifts over to the side a little bit. I was hoping that wouldn't cause a problem because this is connected from side to side. Do you know what? It might not actually be connected now that I think about it. Yeah. How did I not get that a moment ago when that bit disconnects? Because when you're working with something that's separated from your main bit, there's no way to join them back together again. This is just attached to the block that I placed it on. Right. I don't know how I didn't notice that because, I mean, the thing faces down, doesn't it? Anyway, let's sort out these rotations and get this thing fixed. Okay, I've removed some bits and rotated. I think I've pretty much rotated everything on this side. It was all going the wrong way. And now you can see the animation is correct. But the thing here is that the bottom one rotates as well, which we could actually just remove the rotation of that. And looking at how the one next to it moves, that would be fine. Um, I was just thinking we could take this one block lower, though, and have... Our little pokes that stick out on the inside and actually like the sound of that a fair bit so we'll probably go with that let's put this thing on the lift let's do a bit of building together here so you can see oh i panicked for a second there i thought the front had come off but <laughs> uh, of course it's just the orange bit now so if we were to attach that and that and let's just oh we can't watch in action does the bottom rotate i'm pretty sure it still rotates right yeah so let's remove the bottom rotation there or, actually, we could add a second set of bearings, but then we'd sort of be running out. So, we're going to move the bottom rotations. And when I say running out, what I actually mean is having too many. They're kind of not the same thing, are they? But this does 10 at once. I guess we could just add a second controller, couldn't we? In fact, I think I'll probably mess around with that off camera. Right, yeah, that probably really does need to fold up. Okay, let's add a second controller and do that. So here's something a little bit annoying. When you want to attach a long block to a bearing, um, it doesn't sort of see that this right here is conflicting with it. Now if we were to add our own block in that position that's attached to this same part, it would see it. Uh, but if we remove this one temporarily, we disconnect the whole thing. So we can't do that, which means we're going to have to put this block here, I think. Uh, what way is that facing? I want it to face up like all the others. Bam, so one on that side, one on that side, and then we attach this thing at the front like so. So it doesn't look quite as streamlined as it did before and I think these both go positive 90 and I rotated the one on this side. Like we did before I had to rotate everything on that side. Um, are we still attached to the lift? We are. Let's give it a quick test run then. Right. <laughs> that was weird. Um, this one didn't need rotating at the bottom then. Let's swap it back. Oh, something else has gone wrong over there. That's strange because I haven't changed anything. Or did I accidentally attach... No, I didn't attach anything incorrectly. Well, I'll be able to fix that. But there you go. That's the design we're going to go with. And you know what? It doesn't lift it up too high, really, does it? But do you know what? I like it. Okay, so this thing has become big quickly. And it's because I wanted to add this right here. A way to sort of walk up onto it. But it doesn't come down far enough. And I'm not sure if I want to keep that or not. But it's nice to have extra little functions where things pop out to the side. And how is this for a view? That kind of feels like it could be one or two blocks further forward. Which to me kind of puts it out of position with like the natural side of it. But you do want to be you know close to the front when you're using a forklift. So maybe we'll keep that in mind and make this bit right here a little bit shorter. Probably going to remove this. I do want to like show you it so you can see that that was once part of the contraption. I thought it was really cool though. Um, but probably is fairly unnecessary. And another thing, when it comes to design choices, I was sort of going to build some beams like this that go up and become a frame, like around where the driver sits, for example. 
a sort of safety frame because you want to have a roof on this thing. But I think using these blocks kind of doesn't really look so great um, for every situation. So definitely going to be using um, more of some of these blocks. Not sure which ones exactly, um, but we'll make it look good that way. And now really it comes down to you know aesthetics and design choices. So not too much more to talk about now. And probably next time I show you this, it'll be near to being complete. You know what? I am really not liking those pipes. That does not have the... What am I walked into? The desired look that I am looking for. No, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to try something different here. Okay, this thing is looking pretty cool, I think. But I've got to make a decision here. I feel like this is a little bit too narrow. And I had this idea to sort of extend it out and then at the back drop down. But actually, I think it might work better the other way around to come wider at the front. So then when you look at it like this, you see more of the bars coming across from the back. That will probably actually look really good. And so at the moment, I'm going around and adding details. We've got some things connected up to the engines, which I think need to be held in a little bit more. And underneath as well, we've also got some pipes running through, which looks seriously cool, actually. But it's one of the things you don't get to see too often. So this thing is almost done. Uh, we're going to move that, actually. That's definitely something we need to move. And uh, i got to rewire all of this at the moment, because we're going to have one on that side, one on the other side. And if these are actually moved out as well, another good reason to do that, because it'll look so much nicer. So yeah, what was I saying I might do? I can't remember how I had it in my mind, but actually at the front here, I think we want this to come out. And the lights you can also put on the front facing forward like that as well, so we might go for that with the lights. It is done. It is finished. It looks amazing, and I like it. <laughs> uh, this thing looks really cool now. Let's give it a twirl. Is it on the lift? No, it's not on the lift at the moment. So, well, you've seen the wires that are underneath, and let's see, done a little bit of stuff there. <laughs> rearrange these so the lights are in different positions and you can also now see the controls which look really good there's a button on that side it doesn't do anything and uh, do you know what there was one thing that I forgot to do and that was adjust the speed of that I think it's gonna look more genuine if it's slower so let's slide it down by two on either side I think the reality is a lot slower would look a lot better but we also want to use this thing yeah, that, that looks really good, actually, like that. Okay, cool. So, uh, we might not actually have enough lift for our first little task here. I've set up a few things. This could this could easily fail miserably, I'm just saying. Um, that looks like it's going to fail because I put it on the back side, which wasn't very clever. Let's give it a lift. Yeah, yeah, we could have if I had put it in the right spot. Um, is it going to be easy to move that thing quickly? Let's hop off of this and try again. Okay, I've added a couple of extra bits on the end at the front there, just because I didn't think it would actually be long enough to pick this thing up. So here we go. Carefully driving around our warehouse. Bam. Let's pick this thing up. Please do. Yes! Yes! That is success! Look at that! It's a forklift tr truck <laughs> that works. We can now, of course, drive around, which would take a little bit of time, because this thing is slow and big. I could ramp up the engine a little bit, but, you know, forklifts are genuinely quite slow. And then when we're done doing whatever we're doing, uh, whoa, too far forward, a little bit further back. There we go. Tap one. <gasps> Not far enough. Yikes! It doesn't like that, does it? <laughs> I need to get my license before I drive this thing, don't I? There we. No, no, no. I think I'm lined up incorrectly. Yeah, I need to be over more to one side. All right, I am. I am not a driver. Please give me some some leeway here. Let's tilt more to that side and now bring it down. Okay, we look lined up much better now. Stop, stop, one. There we go, that's the way. And it's staying on the shelf. Alright, we've got a couple more things to pick up here. Um, I'm not expecting these ones to go any anywhere near as good. We've also got rear wheel driving on this thing. It takes a while to kick in, it feels like. You need a bit of speed to get that going. So we need to sort of overturn and then turn back again to come in. And is it me or... Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're good. We're good. I thought for a second there the the front of our... I don't know what these things are called. But the the forks, that's what they're called. We're a little too far away. That's a little bit too low, isn't it? But I think we might be able to get away with it if we can just clip in there. Come on, that's it. There, there we go. That's good. But I think it's going to flip over unless we can get a little bit further in. We are clipping on something. I... <laughs> 
This is terrible, I know. Please forgive me. There we go. Come on, come with us. No, we flipped it over. All right, let's try... Let's try what? That one over there? I reckon we can do this if we, if we drive a little bit better here. So let's get properly lined up. Okay, now turn to the side a little bit. Uh, it wasn't really high enough to begin with. And we've actually picked it up, but it's going to fall through, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to fall through at some point. Right, let's let's do a little lap <laughs> around the area and go pick up the other one. This is a lot of fun, actually. Ugh. Oh, rubbish. I think it would have been uh, pretty cool if I'd have you know, made a shelf somewhere else. So pick something up off of one shelf and then put it down on another one. Right, let's do a sharp turn here now that we've got some speed. This is me doing my little <laughs> lap of the area. Not really. And let's try... Oh, let's bring down the, the lift. Let's try and get this one. I've got a feeling approaching it from the other angle would have been better in general. Right, and now we've got to turn as we nudge it. No, I haven't really set that up very well at all. <laughs> well, there you go. That's the forklift. Um, I'm a terrible driver. I didn't set these up very well, so please forgive me for that. But proof of concept, that one over, worked, that one over there worked like a charm. And, uh, and it looks really cool as well, doesn't it? It looks cool. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. And if you're new to Scrap Mechanic here on my channel, then you can subscribe for more Scrap Mechanic videos. But that's it from me today. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.